How many of you call yourself a thalassophile? Or in simpler words, someone who loves the sea. I'm sure that there will be a lot among you who love a relaxing swim in the oceans, or even going boating, cruising and such. But what if we add a bit of spice to this? What if things decided to take a turn and leave you abandoned on the sea? What if you were lost in a huge ocean with insufficient or no food or no method of communication? With no hope of ever returning back, do you think you'd be able to survive at sea? Most of you would not imagine a horrific situation like this. But in an unfortunate case where we face such events, how can we survive? I think the answer to this lies in the misadventures of survivors of such fearful situations. If you're curious to know about these mishaps, hop on. Welcome back to another thrilling episode of Discover X. Today, we are going to find answers to the question, how can you survive lost at sea? Before we begin, remember to drop a like if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Many misadventures have taken place across the vast, endless oceans. While many of them are just lost into the abyss of the ocean, some fortunate ones have survived. Some of them fought till the very end and managed to remain sane until they were either rescued by someone else or crashed into a land. Some of these spellbound experiences have been slightly more significant than the others. Steve Callahan. If you keep up with the show, I Shouldn't Be Alive, then this name would be familiar. 76 Days Adrift, an episode which deeply caught the attention of people. The man who survived over two months lost at sea. His story is quite horrifying, but definitely an eye-opener. With his marriage fallen apart, Steve was ready to start a new chapter in his life, and he set his sail across the Atlantic Ocean in a self-made boat. The first week of the trip was an ideal sail for him. However, after one week, he experienced a disaster. Rough seas and heavy rain. Steve found himself amidst a windy storm. Being an experienced sailor, he was confident in tackling that obstacle. So that very night, he set the boat to autopilot and got some rest. However, the storm proved to be a monstrous disaster. Steve's sleep was interrupted by a loud thud. The boat was getting flooded with water. He was unaware that the boat's hull tore apart. Even then, he was making his way out of this sinking boat. He knew that if he didn't make it to the life raft soon, he would sink to the bottom with his boat. After a lot of failed attempts, he finally got his life raft to pop open. With a slight relief, he made his way into the life raft. But that is when the reality struck him. With the equipment in the raft, he would have not been able to survive long so he had no other choice but to swim back to his sinking boat and grab his survival kit. After freeing his supply kit, he was swimming towards the exit hatch when it suddenly slammed closed. He almost lost his hope until a huge wave washed over the boat and Steve was able to free himself. Without further delay, he made his way to the raft. With a huge disappointment, Steve watched as his dream drifted away with his boat. The following days were pretty rough for him. He was in the middle of nowhere. The nearest hope he had was reaching the shipping lanes, and that would take about two weeks. The water cans he had was barely enough to last him a week. So, for an alternative, he started using his solar stills, which is a water purification kit. Within half an hour, he got a bag full of water, and with a huge contentment, he drank the water, only to realize the salt had not been separated. So in a hope of finding the error, he tore apart one of his solar stills. Fortunately, he was able to identify the wrong and make the kit work, giving him fresh water. But on the other hand, he was hungry. It took him a while before he realized that fishes were all around him. With his spear, he tried to catch a fish, but ended up with a firing mechanism breaking. But that did not stop him. With a broken spear, he still caught a fish within a few feet of him. He finally had a ray of hope in weeks, but the deadly oceans had other plans for him. Several hours into the night, he encountered a shark. But Steve proved to be a mighty man. He fought for survival. He was able to hit the shark with his spear a few times, and the shark eventually left. That very night, he spotted a ship. He never felt that much happiness in weeks. He lit a flare for signaling, but only to witness the ship sail away. 
he was left all alone yet again. The following days didn't prove to be any less than a nightmare for him. The life raft survival kit was his only way of keeping it together. But unfortunately, while he was trying to catch a fish, the spear tore a huge hole in the raft and it started deflating, giving him a wobbly raft. After having a breakdown, he pulled himself together and scavenged for any tool that could help him out. The best he could find was a fork, but this mere fork worked like a miracle and pulled his raft together. However, drifting alone on a vast ocean was affecting his sanity. All he had was a few pieces of dried fish and three cans of water. His muscles were feeding on his body, and he was almost as thin as a mere skeleton. On the 76th day into his misadventure, he spotted a land. He was overwhelmed. However, as he got closer, he realized that the island was a cliff surrounded by razor-sharp corals. Just as he was redirecting his raft, he was spotted by a small boat with two fishermen. They approached him, and that very day, Steve's misadventure came to an end. 76 days on the ocean left him weighing just 100 pounds. After spending six weeks in the hospital, he was reunited with his family. If you think 76 days was a challenge, the survival story of Jose Salvador Alvarenga would blow your minds. Alvarenga was an experienced fisherman. Back in 2012, he and Ezequiel Cordoba departed together in a small fishing boat from the small fishing island, Costa Azul. Although there was a storm building up nearby, they decided to take their chances and went on a 30-hour shift. However, the storm proved to be a nightmare for them, and in a panic, they cut their fishing lines and dropped everything. With the hope of getting back to the coast, they struggled through the storm. Although they managed to get in a distance of only 24 kilometers from the coast, their motor died, and at the very end, they were pushed into the vast ocean. Adding more to their bad luck, their battery even died and they could no longer hear their boss to whom they gave their position. Their boss did arrange a search party, but ended up giving up after five days. They even had no hope of being spotted above as their boat was small. With no equipment on board, they were devastated. They caught tiny fishes or birds with their bare hands and used old floating water bottles to collect rainwater. In days of no rain, they drank the blood of turtles, or even their own urine. Four months into the mishap, Ezekiel got sick from the raw food and eventually starved himself to death. Alvarenga was then left alone in the vast Pacific Ocean. He claimed to have even seen a cargo ship, which did not bother to stop and passed right by him. After 438 days lost at sea, he finally got onto the Ebon Atoll. He dragged himself into the island and knocked at a house. It was the first time he got in contact with a human in over a year. Later, he was flown back to his hometown where he was sued by Ezekiel's family, who claimed that Alvarenga ate his friend's corpse in order to survive. Moving on to the last one, Tammy Oldham Ashcroft and her fiance Richard Sharp were asked by a friend to deliver a 44-foot yacht, Hazana, from Tahiti to San Diego. Although they never traveled that much of a distance, they were pretty confident about their skills for drawing the yacht into the Pacific Ocean as they have had enough experience. However, three weeks into this journey, a Category 4 hurricane confronted them. With a yacht drawing towards the hurricane, they experienced a nightmare. With a mindset of tackling this disaster, Richard sent his fiancée down to the deck. But as Ashcraft closed the door, she heard Richard scream before the boat capsized. She was thrown against the wall and knocked unconscious. When she gained consciousness, she was surrounded by destruction and the love of her life was nowhere to be found. She believed that he was pulled beneath the swells and was lost into the vast sea. But with the yacht sinking, she pulled herself together and using a broken pole and a storm jib, she made a makeshift sail and pumped the water out of the cabin. She then found a sextant and a watch, which would be used to navigate to the closest landmass, the island of Hilo, Hawaii, 1,500 miles away. Relying on the remaining equipment, canned fruit salad and sardines, she managed to keep drifting for 41 days until a Japanese research ship noticed Hazana outside their harbor and pulled her into Hilo. After settling down in her life, 
she explained how the hardest obstacle she faced was losing her fiancé. Her traumatic story was brought to life in the 2018 movie, Adrift. These people proved to be rather brave and fought with every inch of their body till they survived. As far as I believe, hope is the main aspect in the fight for survival. Do you think you can survive in such a situation? And what do you think about these misadventures? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave. See you next time. Bye bye.